Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm going to reshoot the video for this 29 TRX outdoors RV trailer. Give you some of my positives about this trailer, some of my negatives about the trailer. So this is the third time I've tried to shoot a video for this trailer. First time I didn't really like the image quality that came out of that one. So I decided to do another one and I shot that video Took it down, well, we went down this weekend. I was gonna edit that video. I got the new laptop. Uh, my wife had a conference in Portland, so it gave me some downtime. I was gonna edit that video. And I got in a little ways into the video and I thought, you know what? You're being a pretty much a bummer Bobby about this trailer. So you need to reshoot this video because I'm not, it's not that I don't like the trailer. I do, we, we like the trailer. But I came at it from kind of the wrong perspective. And it, it, it kind of showed through the whole video. I, I watched that footage and I was like, no, I can't do this. And the reason being is, I, to be straight up honest, I'm not a huge camping person. If I've got a purpose with camping, I'm all for it. Like I'm going out prospecting or mining. I'm looking at old mines. Um, I've got maybe a hunting trip. I'm not a huge hunter, but if, you know, trips like that where camping is a means to an end, I'm all for it, but just go to go out camping and just sit around a campfire and supposedly relax. That's not my thing. It's not relaxing to me uh, in any stretch of the imagination um, because I think of all the things I've got to do at home, uh, getting those things done, working around the place. That's relaxing to me. That's that's my relaxation. Working in my shop, that's relaxing. But going out and sitting and thinking of all the things I have to do. Um, that's, that's not so relaxing, you know, so, but the world doesn't revolve around me and I've got a family that loves to go camping and I love seeing them happy. So that's one of the reasons we bought the trailer. The other reason is it helps us produce these videos. Um, if we want to go out and explore mines further out away from our place and then, you know, it, gets us close to those areas and it gives us a base of operation. This is kind of going to be our production trailer, but the family's going to enjoy camping in it uh, nonetheless. And we did camp before with the, the wall tent and that turned into quite um, an adventure sometimes. Uh, we, when you we tent with a, or you camp with a tent like that, uh, you tend to come back and put stuff away real quick because you just got a limited amount of time before Monday rolls around or, or your next work day. So stuff gets kind of thrown back in places. So the next trip out, you think, oh yeah, it's in this, this box and you get out there and it's not. And it just kind of turned into a fiasco every time we went out with the wall tent. We liked the wall tent, don't get me wrong, but uh, we needed something that everything was already here and we could just load up and go on short notice because sometimes my schedule... Uh, especially during the summer, it's kind of short notice when we decide to go camping and we wanted it all contained. With that said, why did we choose the, this Outdoors RV 29 TRX? This would be the perfect trailer had it been a fifth wheel. We originally went into it looking for a fifth wheel trailer. Uh, I prefer towing fifth wheel trailers, but most of them we saw that were big enough to haul our can-am side-by-side which is you know 12 and a half feet long and the newer version of it's uh, I think almost 13 and a half feet long when you got into a lot of those fifth wheel trailers either they were really expensive that were big enough to haul that that uh, that can-am or they were really long really long which I should <laughs> I'll get into that in just a minute but we decided now, uh, and most of them we looked at within our price range. We just didn't like them that much. We went and looked at um, what's the Arctic Fox version? I think it's the Desert Fox. We really liked some of those trailers. It's kind of the sister company to Outdoors RV. And in fact, we could have got by with a shorter trailer in the Desert Fox series. We could have got by with a 24 foot, and 
don't let that number de uh, deceive you. When it says 24 foot, that's kind of the inside dimensions. That doesn't count the bumper, the tongue of the trailer or anything. But when we went and looked at the outdoors RV one, in fact, this was the first one we could actually find to look at. Um, we liked the layout a little better than the Desert Fox, but it came with some, it came with needing to buy a longer trailer. This is the 29 TRX. Like I said, the, the 24 foot version of the Desert Fox would have fit our Can-Am in it. Barely, but it would have fit it. So we wound up with this 29 TRX. And we looked at uh, multiple different trailers and the time we bought it last year, trailers were extremely hard to find. We tried to find one of these used, we couldn't find one. We found two and by the time uh, I tried to get arrangements to get up there in a couple days to see them, they were sold. And that's the luck we ran into with trailers last year. Every time I'd find a trailer we were interested in, we found a couple, I think they were Attitude trailers that we were kind of interested in. And I would call the guy the next day, hey, we'll be down tomorrow to look at that trailer. Like in Salt Lake City, which is quite a drive for us, they had already sold it. So it was completely insane. And I don't know if the market's still like that this year, but the pandemic brought a lot of that out. So when we found this one on a lot in Boise, Idaho, we ran over there, uh, looked at it. Our experience with that particular dealer, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was positive like at all. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that dealer and I'm not going to say their name, but it was not a good experience with that dealer. The, the salesman knew absolutely nothing about the trailer. We knew more than he did just by reading the online brochures. Um, he rushed us. Uh, you know, it was just a, one of those really bad experiences. Um, and it's nothing to do with Outdoors RV. It's just that particular dealer. Terrible to deal with. I would never do business with them again, but we wound up buying the trailer. And we, so far, we've really enjoyed the trailer. So I'm gonna jump into some specifics here in just a minute on what we like about the trailer and then some things we wish were a little different with the trailer. But the first thing I wanna mention about this trailer is the cabinet work. The cabinet work is very much above average for most of the trailers we looked at. Unless you go up quite a bit in price, you're not gonna find cabinets built as good as these ones, at least that we'd seen. Um, they're not house quality cabinets, I'll, I'll say that up front, but they are pretty good quality cabinets. And all of them so far have stayed closed when we go down the road, even real bumpy roads, they stay closed really well. The one thing I will say about these cabinets, most of them are fairly high. If you've got short kids with you, or you're just uh, short in stature, you're gonna have trouble with a lot of these cabinets because they're up fairly high. Like for instance, these ones over here, you know, I'm a little bit short of six foot and I have to use a step stool to get up into those cabinets. Same with some of the ones on this side. The only ones that are down low, there's one, two, three or four cabinets where you can put your snack food and things that the kids can get a hold of and things like that. So. If you're one of those people that aren't real tall, just prepare. If you want this trailer, you're gonna be having a step stool in here somewhere to get to a lot of these cabinets. It's not a bad thing. It keeps things up out of the way of your side-by-side -side parking or whatever you're gonna park in here. But just keep that in mind that a lot of the cabinets are fairly high up. And I think there's ample room for um, things in here. We've never filled all the cabinets up yet. We haven't even come close to the inside cabinets getting full. The outside storage is a little bit different story. Under the, the front end of the trailer, there's a storage compartment that goes in kind of underneath the, the queen size bed that's in the front. And when you first look at it, you think, oh man, this is tons of storage. And it's, it's pretty adequate, but one side of it's taken up with a generator that sits over there. By the way, I think it's a 5.5 kilowatt Onan, runs on the, the fuel tank for the trailer, uh, just regular gas and the, I'll jump into the generator more in a minute, but it takes up some of that space that looks like it should go completely under your bed. Well, the one side has got a generator back there, so you don't have quite as much space as it originally looked like. There is some storage underneath uh, the front edge of the bed. You gotta remember the back edge of it is it's got that compartment that goes underneath there, which brings up kind of a little negative about it at the same time. It's a little funky to get into the bed because of that compartment that runs in under there. It's like having a nightstand that comes down halfway 
on your bed and right tight against the bed. So you kind of got to crawl up into bed instead of just kind of laying, you know, just scooting in bed. It's just, it's just a little odd to get in. You get used to it fairly quick, but it is just a little different to get into that bed. Now, the 24-foot desert fox that we've seen, only one side of, one person had an outside edge to get out on. The other side's up tight against the wall. That's one of the reasons we didn't choose that trailer. Uh, we figured that um, it, this would be a better setup for us. That, that was one of the reasons. We like the kitchen layout better in this trailer as well. So with that out of the way, um, the, like I said, the build quality of the cabinets and the whole general trailer itself, the build quality is very much above average uh, for a trailer in this price range. We did um, notice a few little quirks with it when we picked it up. I think it was the factory was in a rush to get it out the door and the dealer wasn't as detailed as they should have been when they did the inspection on it. And there was a few things we caught after we bought the trailer. And it's nothing real major. Uh, the, the biggest thing that popped up was after we bought the trailer and took it out on a couple, um, I think it was about our third trip out, we noticed the hot water tank had shifted out about a quarter to a half inch. And then by the time we got back, it was a definitely a half inch sticking out of the wall. We... Um, which brings up another point about, about the trailer. One of the reasons we bought the tra this particular trailer as well as the build quality and everything else is the factory is only 40 miles away from us. And in the past, we'd had a Nash trailer, which I, I don't remember which factory, whether that was Arctic Fox or Outdoors RV, one of the two. They, they did some restructure thing. I don't know the details, but we had a few problems with that trailer. We bought it new was able to just drop it off at the factory, go have lunch, come back, and they had it fixed. And I don't remember exactly what those problems were, but they're just a couple minor things. So we figured that buying local, we could just do the same thing. If we had issues with the trailer, we could just take it over and drop it off. Well, due to COVID and then the lack of employees, you know, it's really hard to get employees. They are, I don't know if it's still the case, but last year they um, just said, no, we can't. We don't have the time, we don't have the manpower to fix trailers that just come by with problems. You're going to have to take it to a dealer. Um, fortunately, there was a repair shop uh, not far from us. We took it to them. I, there was no way I was going to take it back to the original dealer. Uh, one, it was a long, you know, it's a few hour drive for us. And I, I just didn't like them that much. So we took it to this guy. Uh, it took him a week or two. He finally got it fixed. What had happened was uh, they put the wrong size shim underneath the hot water tank. So the back end was able to flex around and kind of broke itself loose. They got it fixed. It's been no issue since then. Other than that, there was some of these little trim pieces that, that cover up the wallpaper where it joins that came loose. They just needed glued back down. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think that was the only major thing. There was one other issue we found at the dealership was uh, there was a screw that somehow got lodged in the bottom of the back door back here. Uh, we were walking around the trailer and I noticed this screw sticking out. It wasn't ran through the door. It just got jammed up in the weather stripping uh, when they were building the trailer evidently. So they fixed that uh, before we picked it up. And I think that was about it for issues from the factory with the trailer. Other than that, it's been bulletproof. Um, the one exception is the fridge. The fridge hates me. Uh, I'll say that right up front. I don't know what it is about the push buttons on the fridge. My wife can go up and touch it. Uh, and they're not like the old style push buttons. They're touch sensitive buttons. She can go up and touch it and it works every time for her. I go up. I have to twist my finger all different angles before it finally recognizes my fingers there. I don't know if it's because I've got calluses on my finger or what it is but that that fridge just absolutely hates me but besides that it will not stay lit going down the road it's not a it's been a huge issue because most of the places we've been camping with it are within just a few hours and we usually get the fridge cold before we go so even if it goes out it's still cold when we get there now if we were taking longer road trips that would definitely be an issue the place we took it to uh, for the other repairs he says oh they all they all blow out like that I've had other trailers that that was not the case. I've got um, one of the folks at work who have this exact same trailer as mine. 
bought it the same year last year. He had the same issue. The dealer he took it to, they put a, a wind guard on it and fixed the problem. So uh, I'm probably going to take eventually take it to that dealer and see if they can put a windshield on it now as well to protect that thing. Unfortunately, now I think it's out of the factory warranty. Uh, but that has been an issue with that fridge. Uh, we can get by with the push button. My, I'll just, I just have my wife operate the push buttons. I just can't do it. Um, so that, that was a very long winded thing there. Let's jump into some other aspects of the trailer. So the next thing I want to talk about about this trailer, and for some people, this might be a negative for me. It's not, I actually like it. It's, it's a dark trailer on the inside. Just the way it's built, the windows are tinted to keep, you know, a lot of sunlight. It's a supposedly a four-season trailer, which is kind of debatable, but it's a light four-season trailer. Let's put it that way. We've camped in weather that's down to about 25, 26 at night. We stayed perfectly warm, but I'll dive into that in a little more in just a minute. So it's got thermal windows on it and they're tinted, you know, to keep a lot of sunlight coming in and destroying your furnishings and, and warming the trailer up too much. It's easier to keep cool that way. The interiors, the cabinets are fairly dark. The wallpaper is fairly dark. You walk in and it just kind of feels like a dark trailer. Fortunately, as you can see the LED lights behind me, there's, I don't know, 15 to 20 LED lights coming down the center part of this trailer. So, it's a good thing that there's that many lights. If there was not so many lights in this trailer, this trailer would definitely feel kind of gloomy. Um, and if you're one of those people that don't like dark interiors, you're probably not going to like this trailer that much. For me, I personally kind of like the dark interior. It just feels kind of homey. I feel comfortable in it. I'm kind of a dark person anyway, I guess, but it just, it works for me. I'm just kind of pointing it out there that if you don't like dark trailers, dark environments, this trailer, you may not like it too much. But, you know, overall, the uh, the quality of the countertops, the the walls, everything seems to be pretty good. The windows are well above average for most of the trailers we looked at. Most of those, I could see right away you're going to have problems with those windows after a couple of years of bouncing down roads. So, anyway... I just kind of wanted to mention the interior is kind of dark. The bunk bed thing in the back, it works great once you figure it out. It's a little complicated and there's not a lot of videos out there to explain the little latches that you need to flip and stuff. And there's definitely a sequence you got to do it in. And right off the top of my head, I, I could not walk back there right now and do it correctly. I guarantee it. I would mess it up again uh, because you got to, it's just a little complicated. Once you figure it out, and the manual is not a lot of help. I will say that right now. The manual is not much help when it comes to that thing. It says flip these levers, and you're like, what levers? They're just a little tiny lever on top of the couch uh, rail that you need to flip. One thing I will say about this, I think they undersized the wire going to the motor for this. We haven't had any problems with it, but just listening to that motor, um, it sounds like Maybe they should have used a larger gauge wire so it gets the correct voltage to that motor. It just sounds like it's working a little too hard, drawing a little too much amperage for the size of wire that they ran back there. Like I said, it hasn't gave us any problem yet. It just feels like when you listen to that, that motor's it's struggling a little bit. I'd like to jump into some of the specs just real quick on this trailer. The dry weight of this trailer from the factory is about 9,600 pounds. So keep that in mind. The outdoors RV trailers are a little heavy. Make sure you've got a truck that's going to be the right size to tow these things. Uh, your little Toyota pickups, not going to be able to handle this, this trailer. Guarantee it. Um, the gross capacity is around just a little under 15,000 pounds. So you've got, you know... 4,500, 4,800 pounds of uh, load capacity for water, propane, your side-by-side, -side, all the stuff you're going to stick in here. So it's got a fairly decent load capacity to it. One thing to really keep in mind with this, this trailer, the hitch weight, dry, 1,600 pounds. Once you get water, propane, batteries, everything else on this trailer, 
your side by side. The side by side actually takes a little bit of the weight off the tongue, but you get this trailer completely loaded. You're pushing 2,000 pounds at least uh, tongue weight. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's a lot of tongue weight on on this trailer. So you're going to have to buy a good uh, stabilizing hitch. We chose the Blue Ox. There's some people that love them, some people hate them. Um, so far we've had no issues with it. We borrowed one from the in-laws when we first got the trailer. Uh, I don't remember what brand it was. It wasn't rated quite high enough and I wound up breaking that, uh, that hitch on our first trip out with it. So had to upgrade that to at least, I think the one we've got now is rated at 2,000 pounds tongue weight. Made a huge difference in the way this trailer tows. So highly recommend that, that hitch, at least from my experience. And it doesn't pop and crack like some of those bar ones do that the bar con connects directly up to the, uh, the frame of the trailer. It's got chains. Um, and so far, the old style that I had before, I always thought I was going to get killed when I levered that thing over. This one's not too bad at all. So I uh, haven't had any issues like that at all with this that Blue Ox one. And the battery capacity on the trailer, we've got three um, Group 31 size batteries up front. I made a custom box for the batteries. I didn't like the little plastic boxes. Uh, the dealer we bought it from, they put one uh, Group 27 size battery on it and I changed that and made a custom box and put three Group 31 size batteries. The trailer's got excellent solar setup on it. Uh, it's got one, I think it's 120 watt panel, if I remember right, it might be 150 already mounted on the roof. You can put another one on the other side if you wanted. It's got two extra ports up on top to plug more solar panels in. It's got a port on the side of the trailer, which is what we're using. Uh, so, because a lot of times we like to park in the shade, keep it out of the direct sun so we don't have to run the generator to cool it off. And I just run a solar panel out from that port on the side, set it out in the sun, and it does a great job. Now keep in mind that the generator starts off of those batteries. So don't plan on running your batteries down and then charging them back up with the generator. If you let them get too low, your generator is not going to start. So catch that before your batteries get too low. If they're getting down there a ways, just start your generator up, let it run for a couple hours, and your batteries should be pretty good to go. Just don't let them run down too far or you're not going to get your generator started. The other thing, when we're talking about the DC power real quick, this is one thing we really enjoy about this trailer. The TV setup. Uh, the DVD player, all of that runs off of 12 volts, so you don't have to start your generator. If you, it's a rainy day and you want the kids, you just want to hang out and watch a movie, you don't have to start the generator to do that. You can just turn the 12 volt TV on and away you go. I will say we like it, but there's some funkiness to the, um, what is that thing, a Furion? It's a, just, it's a little difficult to use. Compared to a lot of the technology you find in new uh, stereo systems and vehicles and things, this is like kind of stepping back into 1990 uh, technology and the way it's laid out. It's just a little odd. You kind of got to think about it a little different. If you buy one, you'll see what I mean. But overall, it works great. It's just a little kind of glitchy. So let's talk about the AC and heater on this trailer real quick. The AC unit, what little we've used it, works great. No problems as ducted air front and back. Uh, Seem to have no problem. My coworker that has this exact same trailer, the AC unit works fine, but he had a little problem with the generator. Uh, they took it out in the some areas where they needed to run the generator to run the AC, and they had some problems with the, the generator overheating. We haven't experienced that yet, but we really haven't used it all that much either. The heater on this unit is adequate. I think it's a 35,000 BTU and it's kind of coming back into that. Is this really a four season trailer? Um, I will say the front end of the trailer, maybe. The back end of the trailer, not so much. You know, I'll kind of explain why. One is this big back door back here. I, it doesn't let in much air, but I don't think it's as good as insulated as the, uh, the, the walls and everything else in the trailer. The other problem is the front has like one, two, three, four, I think four heating ducts up towards the front of the trailer. There's only one heating duct pointed to the back, which this, where I'm standing is about the halfway point in the trailer. And there's only one small duct pointed back that way. So in the mornings when it's 25 degrees outside, there's a noticeable difference between the front and the back of this trailer. 
We're nice and comfy warm because the thermostat's up that way too. So we're pretty comfortable up front, you know, say we've got it set at 65 degrees. It's 65 degrees back up front. You walk back here, I would say there's an eight to 10 degree difference once you walk back into this area. So that's kind of one of those negatives that I wanted to discuss. There's, there is a definite difference between the front and the back of this trailer when you're out camping in colder weather. So if you want to stay warm in the back, which is where your tables and stuff are gonna be, uh, you're gonna have to turn that heater up a little bit more. The front's gonna get probably too warm if you're up in that front bedroom and it's gonna be just right back here. So that is something we noticed about it. Uh, I don't know if the thermostat being placed somewhere different would make a difference, but right now that thermostat is up where most of the vents are for the heater. The heater works great. Uh, it's not noisy. You know, what else can you say about a heater? It keeps you warm. Okay, let's jump into some of the features that you may not really notice on the lot with this trailer. Well, the door you may notice. The windproof door, it's one of those doors that's got friction the whole way, so you don't have to latch the door back in windy conditions. It just, whatever angle you put it on, it pretty much stays there. If you got really windy conditions, it will move it some, but it's a really nice thing. When you first open the door, you're like, wow, this door is really stiff, but it's that way on purpose, so you don't have to have that latch to latch the door back during windy conditions. It pretty much whatever angle you put it on, it stays there. Let's talk about the axles and tires on this trailer. Comes with good Goodyear tires. A lot of the trailers we looked at just come with really crummy tires. You're paying 45, 50,000, maybe more for a trailer, and they put the cheapest tires they can possibly find on them. Not this trailer. They put good quality Goodyear tires on it. Um, it's got good axles, really stout axles. It's got shock absorbers on the axles, which seems to help quite a bit with the way things ride back here. The irony of all this good undercarriage, this off-road undercarriage that's on this, is this trailer is 35 feet long with the tongue uh, figured in there. You've got a, a long trailer. You couple that with a 20-whatever-foot-long pickup. You're going down the road like a semi-trailer. So you've got all this off-road capability in the undercarriage on this, but you know, how are you actually going to use that? You're not going to take this up goat trails. You're not going to take it in really tight spots unless you're an awesome, awesome, awesome driver. You're just not going to take it in those places. It's, you know, it's just too big. It's kind of find that ironic that it's got all that capability and it's just it's so big. I, I just don't think you'd ever use it. Some other things I really like about this trailer is the 10 gallon hot water tank. It's plenty of hot water. Uh, take a nice shower when you're done. To me, if, if I'm going out camping and I've spent the money on something like this, I want to take showers. I want a good bathroom. There's all those little things. As the older I get, I want those luxuries. So the hot water tank, love it. I like the, the bathroom layout, plenty of room in there. The, the bed in the front, um, it's not home quality type bed, but it's not bad at all. I've had a little trouble sleeping in it a few times, but I finally figured out, I think it's more to do with the pillows uh, that we bought more than the bed. The bed's not bad at all. A lot of trailer beds are just horrendous. You're gonna have to replace the mattress after you get them. This one's one of the few that I don't think you would need to do that. Uh, we've really had no issue with the bed. The other thing that I like about the trailer is the pressure washer. The dealer didn't talk much about it and I don't find much about it in their literature. I wouldn't really call it pressure, um, as in a true pressure washer, but it puts out about 80 PSI or so, and it's great for washing all the majority of the mud off your side by side or whatever before you put it away. So that is really nice that that's there. The one weird thing about that pressure washer setup is I have not found an easy way to winterize the line that goes to the pressure washer. The rest of the trailer is super easy to winterize. That line uh, is its own separate line going to the water tank. And so it's, there's no instructions on how to do it that I was able to find in any of the literature or online. So I just kind of had to fumble my way through trying to winterize that. Uh, that was my only gripe about that, that pressure washer system. The rest of it, it actually works fairly decent. The other thing that's really nice, right out there by your pressure washer, you've got an air station, a little air compressor out there. When I first looked at it, I thought it was probably looks about the same quality as a Harbor Freight air compressor. But it actually um, turned out to be a decent quality little air compressor. <sighs> Gotta love salesmen when they call. Anyway, where was I? Um, 
Thick pressure washer, air tank, the air tank. Um, the air tank setup, it's got, I think it's a four gallon, maybe it's six gallon little air tank out there, more than enough to pump up most tires. I actually used it to blow the lines out on the trailer this fall, this last fall. That worked out actually pretty good. It was all right there, easy to access. So nice little uh, features that are built into the trailer that you, that you don't hear them talk, uh, spoke about too much when you're talking to the dealers. Maybe some dealers, not the dealer we went to. Uh, like I said, we knew more about the trailer than what they did. Okay, some of the features that are in the literature and the dealer brought it up that I think are kind of mm, not that important. One is the party deck on the back. You know, the back door will come down. It's got cables. You can turn it into the party deck. The kids like it. It's really not very feasible, though. It comes with this ridiculous uh, safety um, rail that folds up against your patio doors. And going down the road, it rubs the paint off your patio doors because they're, uh, you know, screen doors. I just th don't think it's a very good setup. Uh, we took that stupid screen thing off and it's heavy and it's hinged out there on these pretty small hinges. Um, it was like an afterthought, probably more for liability than anything. And it's got these stairs that come with it so you can step down off the party deck. The only bad thing about the stairs, well, there's a lot of bad things about the stairs. They take up room. There's not a good place to store them unless you slide them under your side by side or something when you're traveling. And they're awkward to use. I think second trip out, maybe third trip out, I took them out to get them out of the way, stuck them in front of the tire, and I forgot about them. Went to move the trailer when we were done camping and I ran right over the top of them so that the stairs are gone. Uh, we haven't missed them though. So um, the patio doors on the back, I really have mixed feelings about them. When you're out on a nice warm day, it's nice. It does keep most of the bugs out. A little bit will get around them. But they're kind of in the way sometimes uh, when you're loading and unloading. They're just a little awkward. They're not bad. They're not good. You know, the other thing um, the dealer made a big deal about was the toy lock on the front of this, which is, it's a neat idea. It's a retractable cable that you can run through your motorcycle or whatever, bicycles, and lock them up. The, what cracks me up about it is the idea is good, but they put the cheapest possible lock ever. I mean, you could go to the Dollar Tree and probably get a better paddle lock than what that came with. I mean, it is absolute junk. So if you're going to use it, get a real lock and put on it. Other than that, uh, I, I'll admit we've used it a couple times when we wanted to run down to the store. We had our motorcycles along. We just tied them up that way. It's going to keep the honest people honest, that kind of a thing. Uh, I don't think it would take too much effort to get through it, but it's there. It's one of those, it's okay. It's not awesome. The part you've all been waiting for, the complaints department. I don't want to get too negative on this. The The carpet that came with it, we like the, the carpet. It's nice, lightweight, rolls up real tight. Uh, you put it over on the side. So when you're out, you're not on this rubberized floor uh, once you get out there. The only problem is they didn't cut any holes in it for the, uh, the post for your tables. So you have to cut those yourself. Mm, come on, guys. It's a, when we bought it, it was a $58,000 trailer. Come on, could you not take the time to cut the holes in for you. Just one of those little gripes. The other gripe that comes to mind is the keys. Oh, it just drives me nuts. There's like six different keys for this trailer, and I'm not exaggerating. Why can you not key all of the doors and most of the things with the same key? We are gonna order a new key set, a new locks, so everything's keyed the same. But I mean, come on. You're paying that much for a trailer, put the same keys on everything. So you only have one, maybe two keys at the most, not six keys. The tables. Let's talk about the tables real quick. They're, they're, they're okay. I'm not going to gripe too much about them because it's a toy hauler and you're not going to get the same thing as you get on just a regular travel trailer. But the tables are okay. The leg setup is okay. I don't like where the legs are stored. Um, the idea is great. They're stored underneath the front bed in these little clips. 
Only problem is they're kind of a pain to get to. They're a pain to push in and out. I, I just don't know what else to say about it, but they're, I almost think just a little fold up table that you can get at a department store would be better. Uh, just set it in between those couches back there. I think that would actually probably be a better setup than those little tables, but that's just my opinion. And the storage for the tables back here, they're riding up against the wall with these little bungee setups. It's not terrible. I don't know where else you would put them. Let's talk about the toolbox. I really liked this idea when I saw it. It's got a little toolbox built down into the floor so you can store some tools and stuff down in here. It's a great idea. Two problems with it. One, if you roll the carpet out and get your chairs all set up, these little reclining chairs, which I'll talk about those in just a minute. When, if you need to get into your toolbox uh, after you've got done setting up camping, guess what you got to do? You got to move everything out of the way, roll the carpet up to get to the toolbox. Not a great idea. It's not, it's just kind of crummy. You know, it's just one of those things. It would have been better had there been a flap built into the carpet to where you could just pull the flap up, get into your toolbox, put the flap back down, but they didn't do that. So the other thing is the handle on the toolbox. It's one of those handles that when you lift up on it, it comes up almost 90 degrees. So it's really hard to hold on to when you're lifting up. I would have rather seen a handle that just pops up a little bit so you've got something to hold on to when you're lifting that thing. As it is, half the time it slips out of my hand and slams back shut. So, you know, it's minor gripes, but I still, I, the idea behind it's great. Implementation, not so much. Let's talk about the chairs since I brought it up real quick. So these recliners, you know, they need to be movable. You need to put them up in the kitchen area when you've got your side-by-side -side or whatever back here. That's all great. They're, they're kind of comfortable. They're not great. They're kind of comfortable. Like I said, you're going to give up some things when you get a, a toy hauler. My gripe about them is the bolts uh, constantly rattle out of them. I put Loctite on them. They had Loctite on them from the factory, it looks like. I don't know who made these things. But you, you just cannot keep the bolts in them. You'll you know go on a two-hour trip up to your camping spot, come back here. You'll find three or four bolts laying on the floor. Bring some, figure out what size. Uh, I, I did have it memorized. I don't now. The uh, hex head is on those uh, for the Allen wrenches. And make sure you've got one with you because you're going to need them to put the bolts back in these chairs. The other kind of negative, and I've already brought this up, it's a bumper tra pull trailer. Uh, some people love them. Some people hate them. I'm kind of... Either way, I prefer uh, Gooseneck or Fifth Wheel. Most of the trailers we've had before all been Gooseneck. Um, the Fifth Wheel idea is great, but it takes up so much of your bed. So I usually just use the Gooseneck adapter and put uh, that on. That's what we were shooting for when we bought the trailer, was a, that style of trailer. But we just couldn't find anything we liked, so we settled for this. So far, after we've got the good stabilizer hitch, it's really not been a problem. It is a problem when you try turning tight. Um, trying to get in a tight parking spots. I would much rather have a gooseneck trailer for that. But, you know, it is what it is. My top thing I disliked about this trailer is the smell. And it wasn't the smell inside. It was the smell outside this trailer. Honest to goodness, I thought this was a Friday trailer and one of the guys was quitting that Friday and had taken... I don't want to get too nasty here, but decided to take his bathroom activities and stick it somewhere on the front end of this trailer. I, I was I was not kidding. This trailer stank so bad. Um, I'd walk out of our house, which is 80 feet away from where I'm parking the trailer. I'd walk a few steps out. I'm like, what? We've got a sewer leak somewhere. I spent a day trying to figure out where the sewer leak was around the front end of, of, of our house. I thought something between our septic system and our drain field had busted open and seeping up out of the ground somewhere. That's how bad this trailer smelled on the front end. Finally figured out it was the trailer that smelled that bad. I could not believe how bad the front end of this trailer smelled. It was something to do, I think, with the rubber coating that they put on the front, I think. The smell went away after a couple months, so it might have been something from somebody at the factory. I, you know, it's kind of a little worrisome, but it seemed to be something on that plastic uh, rubber stuff that was on the front of the trailer. Like I said, it stank so bad. 
I just could not believe how bad that, that stank. And for like three months, it smelled that bad. It finally tapered off and went away. But, you know, the first time we went out camping with it, I was like, okay, it, the, the smell followed us. And that's when I kind of discovered it was the rubber on the front. Up until then, I was sure we had a sewer leak somewhere. And eventually it was going to pop up enough that I could figure out where it was coming from. But it just turned out it was this, it was the trailer. So, yeah, that was the number one complaint about this trailer was just that smell. Well, that's going to about wrap it up for this trailer or this video. Um, would I recommend this trailer? If you're into camping and you want to tow your side by side and you want a lot of comfort besides these, these reclining chairs. Uh, and you want to do it in some style with a good built trailer, I think this is a good trailer. Like I said, I'm kind of gloomy about the whole trailer camp, camping in general, but camping with purpose, this is a good unit. Um, so far, we've had minimal trouble with it and it tows good, it's got good undercarriage, it's got good features to it, it's got plenty of water, lots of gray water, black water tank, uh, uh, capacities I really for the most part I, there's not a lot of negatives unless you get a smelly trailer there's some a negative there for a few months unless you can figure out some way to get rid of that smell quicker I will say when we bought this trailer it's been almost exactly a year ago just a little over a year ago I just looked before I came out to make this video because I was curious if the price had went up because they kept saying the price is going to go up we paid 58 ish thousand for this trailer, which we tried to find used ones. They just couldn't find any. This trailer today, um, the ones I could find, $75,000 uh, sitting on the lots. That's how much these trailers have went up. I don't know if the, the market's still like it was where there was no negotiation on the price because they didn't have to work to sell these things. They didn't, they didn't need a salesman there. You just needed somebody to sign the papers because that's how quick they were selling them. I don't know if that's still the case today, but there's not a lot of them on the market again. So I'm assuming they're still in high demand, but the price has went way up on these trailers, uh, way more than I thought it would go up. I was figuring, you know, maybe four or $5,000 increase, not 15, 16, $17,000 increase. So, you know, that, that's a big increase in price. Is it worth 75,000? To me, no. Um, it was it worth fifty-eight thousand. Mm, I didn't. Obviously, we bought it, so it must have been worth that. But I would have a hard time going and paying seventy-five thousand. But in today's market, that might be the going price of things. Um, you look at those little dinky motorhomes; they're completely outrageously priced. So maybe that seventy-five thousand is not a bad deal. I don't know. Anyway, that about wraps it up. Uh, that's my review of this trailer. Hopefully I wasn't too bummer Bobby on this trailer, on this video. So we'll go edit this thing, see how it turns out. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you out in the woods using this trailer as our base camp.